Welcome to the Troy Fire Department virtual open house. I'm Lieutenant Durham with Station 4. This is our heavy rescue. This heavy rescue runs on every extrication in the city of Troy. Uh, extrication means a vehicle accident where somebody is trapped. Uh, it also runs on specialty rescue runs as well as any structure fire in the city of Troy. Uh, essentially it's a giant toolbox. Inside this, we have every tool or most tools we need for any extrication, specialty rescue, or to help out with a structure fire um, on the rescue side. To my left here, we have extrication equipment. This is all battery powered. We've got cutters, spreaders, specialty tools for opening commercial and residential doors, as well as a ram here for spreading things apart. These are all battery operated, very portable, and we're able to use these in a lot of different ways. One of the first things we do when we roll up on a vehicle extrication is we do a 360, which means a walk around the vehicle to make sure that we understand all the hazards involved. After that, we're going to have crews dedicated to stabilizing the vehicle, making access to the patient. Um, we need the patient protected, so we're typically going to have blankets or tarps and we're going to cover the patient. Uh, part of making access to the patient will be to break a window and we'll clear all the glass out of this vehicle so it's no longer a hazard for us or for the patient inside the vehicle. So Firefighter Brown will step in here, he'll break the uh, first window. Now Firefighter Brown is clearing all the glass out of the window opening and that's to ensure that everything is safe for us when we make access to that patient. The next step to make proper access to the patient would be the windshield. The windshield's a little bit different. Uh, the windshield is laminated glass. It's two pieces of glass with a plastic sheet, essentially, in the middle. That holds everything together. So we can't use an easy tool like this and expect it to break. Where the side windows are safety glass. They break into little bits, and you can see it's very easy to break up into thousands of pieces. Now one thing to note, a lot of the newer vehicles, it's becoming a requirement to have the laminated glass on the side and the rear windows. So this is an area that we're actually going to have to adjust and, and change to. But to access the patient from this, we've got a tool called a tomahawk. It's essentially a saw, but we use it like a tomahawk. We break the window. Once it's broken, we put this end in and we use it like a saw. We'll let Firefighter Cleary show how we actually do this. So now that he's got a purchase point, a hole in the glass, he's going to insert the other end and run it just like a saw. There's other tools we can use. We can use a sawzaw. We've got a special glass cutter that's adapted to a drill. Um, so we've got a lot of different tools in our toolbox to get through a windshield. So this is called the Ripper. This is a newer tool that we've uh, just purchased. Uh, it's used to cut apart windshields or cut through windshields on vehicles, cut through the laminated glass. This will work both on the windshield and the new side windshields and the new rear windows when they all become laminated glass. It features two upper fixed blades and then a movable lower blade. Uh, it fixed, it's fixed right to a standard DeWalt drill and we'll watch how it operates. All right, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our cutting tools here. We have both electric and hydraulic. Um, these are commonly referred to as the jaws of life. One of the advantages of our newer equipment, it's all battery operated, still works the same. It has a hydraulic pump built inside of it, opens, closes. We're able to uh, bring these almost anywhere and work to extricate somebody in a vehicle, or get somebody out of a vehicle, whether they're far off the highway, uh, maybe it's an industrial accident, we have to go inside a building. Uh, maybe we're helping out our fire, fellow firefighters um, at a structure fire that may have become trapped. So these tr tools are very useful, they're extremely portable. Uh, again, these are cutters. Just to give you an example of our other cutters, again, sets of the jaws of life. These are a little less portable. They're run by hydraulics that are attached to the truck. The hydraulic pump is built into the truck itself. Um, same cutters here, these operate a little bit slower, 
and we're also limited by distance. Now with this vehicle, it's fairly straightforward. Everything's intact, um, nothing's been smashed on it. Um, so we're gonna look at removing a door right now. We've got Firefighter Cleary and Lieutenant Young. They're operating a Hearst tool, Jaws of Life. This is a spreader. So this tool will spread open the door and the reason they're in the window right now is they're opening up the metal so we have a place to work. Now you can see on the side of the door there they've got a nice spot to stick the tool now. So they're going to slide the tool in there and start spreading the door open. Now one thing to imagine is while you're sitting in this vehicle if you happen to be the one that got in the accident things are going to be quite loud. So typically we'll have a firefighter or a paramedic somebody in the vehicle with you to help calm you down, let you know what's going on, let you know that you know, you're gonna be hearing loud pops and cracks and things are gonna be bouncing around a little bit. Uh, we try to make it a comfortable experience, but at the end of the day, we've got a job to do to get you out of this vehicle. And um, it's hard when you've gotta spread and twist and cut metal. One thing you notice, we've got two guys operating this tool. Uh, these tools weigh upwards of 60 to 70 pounds. They are very heavy, and for one person to operate them for very long, it tires, it tires them out quickly. Now that we've spread the door open, we'll have Firefighter Brown and Firefighter Rebishankar cut the hinges on the door and we'll remove the door completely.
So with a vehicle extrication, there's a lot going on. A lot of hands working on the vehicle at one time, a lot to manage. Uh, we're going to demonstrate a roof flap. We're going to take this roof, we're going to cut it low, and we're going to flap it over. Uh, for this, we're going to have two people cutting at the time. Uh, in a normal extrication, we could have as many as three cutters going, even a few sawzaws cutting these cars apart. So again, there's a lot going on at once. So the first thing they're going to do is cut each A pillar down low. This will separate the roof from the body of the vehicle. Once they're through that A pillar, they're going to move up just in front of the B pillar, just above the driver and passenger's head, and they're going to make a relief cut into the roof. This will compromise the structure so we can fold this roof out of the way. Now we have a couple options here. We could just flap the roof. Depending on time, we could run a sawzall through the roof and take it off completely. Or we could run through the A, B, C pillars and take the roof off the vehicle completely. I apologize, it's getting a little dark out here. We got everything up up and running to film this video and we got dispatched to a semi-truck on fire on 75. So this has been taking a little bit longer than we expected. But the last step here is many times you'll have an incident where the patient, the driver, will have their feet tangled in the brake accelerator pedal or the steering wheel will be down and we can't actually get the patient out because they're pinned underneath the dash. So what we're gonna demonstrate is a dash lift. We're gonna make a cut here, we're gonna make a cut up in the fender, and we're gonna lift this steering wheel, ideally, so it's pointed up at the sky. There's a few different ways we can do it. One of the ways is with this electric ram right here, and we can spread this out until it makes contact between here, a nice diagonal, and it'll lift the dash. But we'll show you a different method right now uh, where we'll use our spreaders. So the first thing they're going to do is remove the fender. Uh, that gives us access to the structure of the vehicle. We can actually see what we're doing, see what we're working with. Right now he's making a little space with the hood so we can get our cutters into place. Now we're going to bring the cutters in and cut the frame.
Now you can see the steering wheel is pointed up this way. We have all sorts of room to the patient's feet or room to access the patient's feet down here. Cut the brake pedal if we have to. So we've got a lot of room to work with. Thank you for joining us. Our first annual virtual open house here with Troy Fire Department Station 4. Hopefully you enjoyed us cutting apart that vehicle. Uh, maybe learned a little bit of uh, the process we go through when we arrive on scene for a vehicle extrication. Uh, just a reminder that uh, TV makes it look fast, but you never know with a vehicle. It depends on the, the level of uh, damage. It could be a simple door pop, which is a couple minutes to a really involved extrication that could take upwards of 20, 25 minutes. So it really depends on what we run into. Uh, thanks to Troy Auto Care for donating the vehicle. Uh, they actually donate a lot of vehicles for our training purposes that we get to cut apart and train on. And don't forget to test your smoke alarms tonight. <laughs>